very much a user experience background. It's good to have Sarah here. She comes from that kind of background as well. And I basically also have been able to have the pleasure of also going and studying a lot around user, ex user customer experience as well as user experience. So today, I kind of want to go into it a bit more, but I'm going to, at the end of this presentation, just to lay it out to you, at the end of this, I'm going to speak to you about, from a customer experience standpoint, everybody here uses social media for their business, right? So I'm going to give you, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to speak a bit on the difference between a goal and a system. So everybody knows about setting goals, right? You set a goal, you achieve a goal, and then that's it, right? So what I'm going to give you today is not a goal for your business every week, but I'm going to give you a system that you apply that will actually change the way that customers perceive you online. Okay? And that will fundamentally shift your customer experience. But I'm going to show you how it's going to work. So when it comes to customer experience, I want to first start about connect. These, I'm using the same points that Gary spoke about before. Now, when we talk about connecting with customers, has anyone ever heard of this brand before? Yeah. Yeah. Now, KFC had a big challenge when it came onto their customer experience. What happened was, is that at the, about 15 years ago, 15, 20, 20 years ago, I think it was a bit more, about 20 years ago, there was an issue around this word fright. There was a documentary that came out and this guy basically ate McDonald's for like a time, I think it was about a month to two months. Yeah, and then at the end of it, he started to develop early, early set on signs of diabetes and things like that. And when people heard this word fried, they realized that they associated it to like very unhealthy eating people and people eating buckets of chicken and stuff like that. Also, there was another controversy that came some years later around chicken. They realized that there was like told that the chicken was fake and there were reports that animals were being misused. So they changed their brand into now what we currently see as well, KFC. But now what's happened is that you have a whole generation <coughs> who are growing up who don't know what the F word stands for. Now we also have the RTA. The RTA, this is another organization that had an experience problem. The RTA is are called the Road Traffic Authority in Australia. Now, I don't want to shock you, but I will shock you. And basically, they had this advert that was running. Has anyone know this advert? And the way it would work is that they had a massive challenge. Massive challenge. I, I didn't want to shock you, but I, I wanted you guys to understand how this would work. They had an issue, there was a lot of road traffic accidents primarily around the, the gentlemen, young boys between the ages of 18 to 25. Anyone in here between that age range? And what happened was to, to stop the road traffic accidents, they sent that initial advert out. But what happened was is that it didn't actually change. Even though the shock value, so you, how did you guys feel when you saw that? Shock job, it, it affects you, doesn't it? <coughs> Sometimes you even want to turn away, you don't even want to see something like that. But they realised that in shocking people, and then later, that later on in the video, they then have a doctor, a trauma doctor, who then explains how it works, and explains what happens to the brain when somebody gets hit by the car, informing you, giving you the information and shocking you, but they realised that uh, the road traffic accidents were not going down. So then they thought to themselves, the actual people who are being affected the most by these types of accidents are between the ages of 18 to 25. So what do 18 to 25 year olds care about? So they came up with this advert. When they began to actually speak to their desired audience who were affected the most, they realized that what do they care about? Social inclusion, and they also want the attention of girls, right? And even from their peers. So when the first video really shocked us, didn't it? And informed us, and sometimes that's how some of our branding and our marketing can be. Shocks us, informs us, <coughs> tells us about the certain state that we're in or the problem that we're having. But when you actually connect to the heart of people's core issues and their values, 
you definitely will get what we call the heart response. Another thing that you can focus on is customization. Now, before Pe um, Coke launched this campaign, they were having an issue, they were declining in sales. The reason why, do you remember Fabian spoke in the beginning about how informed our customers are becoming? What's happening is that as people are becoming more and more informed, and especially with um, health and wellness becoming a big push in society, um, we, I have a personal you know, thing called the New Start Principle, nutrition, exercise, water, sunshine, temperance, air, rest, and trust. You know, and that's a principle that we can all live by when we want to talk about health, right? And as people are becoming more and more informed, what they were realizing that sugar content in Coke, people were saying, no, don't drink Coke, don't drink it, it's really bad for you. So Coke had this problem. How do we get a new generation of well-informed customers to now actually get involved in Coke? So what they did, you can see it, right? Actually, just put your name on a bottle. Such a simple idea, right? But this is where customization or personalization, how do we make my product, my service, my offering personal to my specific customer? Make sense. Fabian, what happened in Nigeria? Well, I was um, in Nigeria for two years working, and at the time when they launched this campaign in Nigeria, uh, it was, uh, <coughs> the strategy was really interesting. What they did is, first of all, they took all of the celebrities, so music artists, actors, and they gave them personalized bottles. Mm -hmm. They gave it in like a really nice black box. It was all fine. And then they started tweeting and Instagramming it, saying, thank you very much, Coca-Cola, for this. It got to the stage where if you were an artist and you didn't have a Coke bottle, it then became a sign that you're not a big artist. <laughs> so the artist started calling Coke, saying, where's my bottle? Like, <laughs> we just gave this guy a bottle, where's my And then what they decided to do, which was amazing, is that um, obviously, majority of the names in of Nigeria are tribal names. Um, so they used the Hausa, Yoruba names, they used every single type mm -hmm. of name and they literally flooded bottles with traditional Nigerian names on the bottles mm -hmm. and people went crazy to the extent where bottles were getting sold out. People who didn't drink coke were just getting a bottle so they could take a picture with their actual name. Mm -hmm. We said there were some challenges because some names are a lot longer than others. <laughs> but that was the whole point, that was yeah. the premise of it. So we're seeing the point guys, it's making sense, yeah? Another thing that we really we spoke about, what Gary touched on was community. How do we actually build community? Now, has anyone ever heard of Zipcar? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Zipcar, simple model, right? Everybody in a certain location can share a car, right? But what Zipcar did is that at the end of a the month they do Zipcar meetups. And everybody that rents or actually rents a car in a certain location they can actually come to these meetups just like this and they'll be like, oh, you rent the Honda Civic, don't you? Yeah, I rent the Honda, Honda Civic too. What did you do this week? And you see what's happening now. It's actually becoming a starting point in conversation. Now we're building community, but it's always so building the brand. Another thing brands are beginning to do is they're also beginning to become very involved in social causes. And what we're realizing is that when you speak to the heart needs of people and care about what people actually are caring about in society as a brand, authentically though, not just because it's a fad or because it's something that everybody should talk about, you're realizing that brands are not just becoming um, something that people care about, but something that people are beginning to really love because of the community aspect. And this actually, sometimes you don't really sometimes need to worry about gaining new customers as much as actually having a powerful community base that you can go from and that's your core. So I can tell you from the beginning that we're going to talk about how we're going to work and give you a strategy for your business. And before I even present, I want to speak to you about these two things. And Gary mentioned the content, and I'm going to speak about the content. So when we talk about content, primarily, fundamentally, we're talking about images, video, and text. Everything you're receiving online is one of these three things. It's either images, video, or text. But that image, video, or text is, is given to you on a certain platform, and that's what we call the context. And when you look at it, anytime you receive something that you love, that you like, and you know what Facebook have done, have you seen it, the, the new button gives you like six different emotional reactions, is because that information informs not only the design, but informs what type of information from the algorithms they will now give to you. You make sense so far? Eventually, we're going to get to a place where we don't have platforms and apps on our phones, where things will become either like with glasses, like VR-based glasses, or we'll touch things on the screen. So eventually, we'll become, I shouldn't say a screenless society, but like how we now went from desktop to mobile phone, eventually, we're going to get to something else. And that's another discussion for our next event that we can highlight to you as well. But if you 
are sharing any content online. A lot of times, like Fabian says, people are just repurposing the same thing on all different channels. But like we said, like with Coke, Coke, they personalized it. They went to Nigeria, different context, what happened? It's the same content, but they had to change the names, right? And it's such a simple change, but because the context <coughs> is different, it changed for a different name. In one con context, giving it to famous people may not be the most effective way. Maybe giving it to Instagram influencers might be even more effective. Are you with me, somebody? So these are strategies that we need to think about whenever we're sharing our information. So what does that mean? As you begin to think about the content and context, I'm going to speak to you about these three things. The first <coughs> thing is what we call pillar content. This is one thing that we teach our businesses. We want to give it to you today for free. Hey. Hey. <laughs> All right. And when we speak about pillar content, pillar content means this. Every single week, you are going to look, go into launch pillar content. This means something that's consistent, that's regular, that my community can begin to start expecting from me. If I begin to expect something from you, you are now being consistent, which helps to build loyalty and trust. If you build loyalty and trust from the actual client or customer that you have, loyalty and trust is the key thing we're driving for. As a designer, as a user experience designer, my ultimate goal is loyalty and trust for that business. I want to design something and teach them a strategy as they release their content to help them eventually build loyalty and trust with their consumer. Is that making sense? And pillar content is one we do, we do that. Around this pillar content, we speak about how we build the right type of team. And I'm going to show you what this means. And then we have this thing called agile iteration, which is a process of analytics and just changing by listening to your customers. Is it making sense? Mm -hmm. Alright, I'll show you what this means. So when we speak about pillar content, for example, let's use a platform like YouTube. Imagine you used to start a TV show, right? Um, I know you do yoga, right? So you, you, you've got yoga stick. So let's say it was, all right, guys, we want to talk to you about the, 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 the yoga fanatics, for example. This show is the yoga fanatics. And every week, you release content that's between two to 20 minutes that just comes out every week speaking about the, um, one of your customers who is actually consistently, she went from couldn't do it really well, now she's become amazing. And you follow her over a period of time, and then it might change over time. Every week, people are now realizing that I'm hearing from people who are receiving this workshop, and now I'm hearing from them the testimonials, but in a more creative way. That one video could be cut up, and it could become a 60 second little video for Instagram. You could chop it up again, and it could become another video for Facebook. Are you seeing me? So it's one video record every week, you can chop it up in so many different ways and repurpose it for the different platforms. So just because you recorded it once and it could be done in five minute edit, that doesn't mean it's effective for Instagram, right? Because Instagram doesn't work in five minutes, right? But then when it goes on a platform like your Instagram stories, you need to change the size and dimensions of it. It needs to be a bit more interactive. It only lasts for 10 seconds and it's gonna be deleted in 24 hours. So how do I take that video, or a little snippets of that video, make it punchy, make it interactive, put some music on it, put some good text on it, that grabs my attention for 10 seconds. You see what we're saying, guys? Mm -hmm. Even though it may be the same con um, platform, people receive the inf information in different ways. Why? Because our psychology is changing in the way that we're using these platforms. What is happening now, especially with the younger demographic, likes and reactions, so, you know, when you put sad face, smiley face with the stuff, that's becoming almost like currency. So, what we're speaking about is how you're leveraging these things as a business to eventually, obviously, eventually make you money, but to a younger demographic, these are the things that are making them think, wow, this is important to me. So, if you're trying to appeal to a younger audience, you need to think, how can I produce content that they will share, that they will give to their friends that will do that every week? You want to create articles, you find them now that people like to read, they still like to read. So, especially if you're in the B2B space, LinkedIn articles, Facebook articles, have you ever seen on Facebook now posts that are just really, really long? And have you find, even if many of you, I know you guys may not be using Facebook as much, but the people are still on Facebook reading long posts. So what we're finding now is where they say, oh, you need to make your videos really short, no, 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 no. YouTube reward you if you have longer videos on their platform. And if you have more videos on their platform, it's even better, better for you. So what's happening is that 
You need video content that becomes what we call the work horsemen or the horsemen for you. In the background, they're just consistently chugging along, chugging along, getting views, they're getting shares, they're building your SEO, they're building your, your, your backlinks to your website and making it good for you. And then you need your images for your platform as well. So I'm going to show you how this works. So we said we had the one video, right? And we chopped up that one video and we repurposed it for another platform. And it could be, and, and this one video could work in any one or four different ways. We haven't got the time to go into how it works, but I'm just, does this make sense so far? One video and you can use it in four different ways. In one, on YouTube, it could be a five minute interview. On Facebook, it could be two, one, one little question of the best bits. You know, you could cut it again and it could be like a 60 second little trailer. And then it could just be on Facebook, just like Instagram stories. You know, like on Instagram, they've got that kind of story section on Facebook now. It could work in the same way. That's one video that's working in a different way for you. Then you could take that one person and you can transcribe that article. You can put it on, on Medium, you can put it on LinkedIn, you can put it on your own website. Then you could talk about how was the workshop for that week? How did it go? What did people think about it? It's another article. Then another article could be based upon diet, food, things like that for that week. You see what we're saying, guys? You're taking one thing, just one thing for that one week. And this is what we're saying about pillar content. You take that one show, that's your pillar. Every week, you know we're going to go for that thing. But you're going to think, if people like this pillar content, how do we get more branches from that pillar content that allows us to now do a lot more? Now what we're saying is, people are now going to start sharing your video content, right? So you take that one video and it begins to get cut into different ways or you begin to share it in different ways. You now put it in it, putting it on Instagram, you can be sharing links on Twitter, you can now be putting it on Pinterest. And I can show you Pinterest. Pinterest works well, especially with quote cards. But people really use Pinterest before they want to shop for something, especially women between the ages of 25 to 45. Definitely Pinterest is a platform for that. So what we're saying, guys, is every week, if you focused on pillar content, that meets the needs, that connects through community, that personalized to them, right? And is consistent on the right platform. This is just one, one system. It's not, not, not always the best system, it depends on what works for you. But we always say to people, if this is something that you can work towards every week, one week you might say, I'm gonna do two videos, two articles, and four videos. But the point is that when a system is in place and you aim to meet your system, you don't need to feel down or bad. Or, or what do I do this week? You just go back to your system and you say, you know what? I haven't done any pillar content this week. Let me just look at my system and follow my system. Is that making sense? Whereas a goal would say to you, oh, just put out five, five, five pictures. A system is saying every week, this is something we're doing every single week. It's not specific. This week, my pillar content might be the testimonials. Another week, my pillar content might be a different type of show you would do. And as you build the team, you may start to get different pillar content. So Gary Vaynerchuk is a prime example. The Ask Gary V show, one pillar. The Daily Blog, another pillar. You with me? So what's happening is that as he's building these pillars, over time, the ones that are like, because you've got daily content going, YouTube is now rewarding it. And then you're gonna to get to a point, there's this, um, um, has anyone ever heard of the Chinese bamboo tree? Chinese bamboo tree. Now Chinese bamboo tree, it grows underground for five years. And after five years, it grows 90 feet tall in five weeks. So you almost need to see your pillar, your pillar content working for you like that Chinese bamboo, bamboo tree. It's working in the background, it's consistently growing. Not everybody can see it yet, but there's going to come a point where all of this content, as long as it's good, as long as it's customized, as long as it's personal, as long as it's the right content within the right context, <coughs> and it's working for you, it's gonna reach a point where it's gonna shoot and have exponential growth. Are you with me? Yeah. Albert Einstein even said it, that compound <coughs> interest is one of the world's most powerful things. And it's the same way in social media. Mm -hmm. These things literally work for you as long as you're consistently pushing it out. So I really hope this has been powerful for you. Guys, we can, we're gonna send this talk to you. Just give us your email addresses. Actually, you have somebody. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right? So we can mail this out to you, so you can download it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.